It's just another night for Supernatural Girls. Real stories, real answers to life's biggest supernatural mysteries. And now for another exciting interview with paranormal experts from this world and others. Here's your host, paranormal researcher Patricia Baker, on the one, the only, Supernatural Girls. Welcome, everyone, to a very special episode of Supernatural Girls Radio. As you know, this is where paranormal is normal, but tonight we are taking a bit of a break from that because we have a very important guest that we're bringing on, Robert Abatalo, and he is an expert in Lyme disease and autoimmune disease. And he is one of my personal favorite people in the world. He's very devoted to his practice, to his patients, and he has a lot to let us know about Lyme disease and autoimmune. So in a few minutes, we are going to bring him on the show and get ready to learn a lot and hopefully increase the power of your own health and be self-empowered with your own health. So that's what this is all about tonight. And before we introduce him, though, of course, PK, we've got to talk to you. So yeah. what's going on with the numbers? What's happening? Well, we have to take a look that November 22nd is a seven universal day. This is very telling date because seven makes most of us overly tired and suspicious and all that good stuff. But you're going to find that most of us did not sleep well last night, that there's going to be a lot of tossing and turning that had gone on, a lot of dreaming that's going to have taken place. And it's going to put things somewhat to the negative side and create some fears and fantasies because that's what happens when we dream and it's that heavy. But uh, it's going to kind of give us a push. The holiday's coming, so to assist the holiday and not be so exhausted, take fantasies and visions and put them together by assisting yourself, doing some things ahead of time, make your plans for your Thanksgiving gathering, do some of the things you can do ahead bake, etc. You don't get these things out of the way. But doing what you can in advance will allow you and your family to certainly enjoy the day with less stress. That sounds like a plan because it's yeah. always stressful. Oh gosh, I mean, you yes. got to make Thanksgiving such a complicated meal. You've got to make all these things. You don't have to, but it's more fun if you do. I know. It. It's and then everybody to eat sits out. down. And, yeah, I know. Because then after all that work, it takes hours and days and then everybody's done in like 10 minutes, you know. It's it's not, you know, it takes you two days to prepare, prepare it and 15 minutes to eat it. <laughs> but I was going to also add, looking forward to the holidays, let's make some plans to offer a special reading or session to either of your friends or family through, with Patricia or myself. Additional opportunities to relieve stress is having a phone reading with either of us. Supernatural Girls are evolved to help you as well. So let's That's see right. what we could do. And you don't have to wrap it, mail it. You can just That's call them. How easy is Tell that? Tell them to I'm... call us. Yes. That's right. We are on supernaturalgirls.com website. You can find us there. And also be sure to go to our Facebook page. Now, we have two of them we want to talk about tonight. One right. is our usual, Supernatural Girls on Facebook. We've got great stories. We always put them up every day. And we've got some terrific ones. So go there to check it out. Give us a like and a follow. And then we also have on the health Side, the real zombie plague on Facebook. Be sure to go there. We've got a tremendous amount of information. You can make comments. You can talk with other people who may be sharing some of the same mm -hmm. struggles that you're having with your health. But lots of good information. Again, that's the real zombie plague. Now, this is a pre recorded show. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we won't be able to take your questions live. However, in case you miss this show and you want to pass it on to a friend or you want to hear it yourself again, you can get it from our archives. I will be putting it on both Facebook pages and it'll also be on our website. So this is a very special show. Again, we're doing this as a kind of a lead into the holidays to help everybody enjoy right. them, help everybody with their health as much as we possibly can and of course we always recommend you check with your own doctor your own practitioner the information that we're giving today is just that information we are not diagnosing anything or prescribing anything but we're having a very interesting discussion in a couple minutes 
with Robert Abatello, and he is going to share some very interesting facts with us. These are things we really need to know because autoimmune disease in this country alone, I was reading, there's 50 million people that they're estimating that right now are suffering from autoimmune. Now with Lyme, I'm hoping Robert has more current statistics than me because the CDC is downplaying it tremendously and saying there's only about, oh, I don't know, 300,000 cases or something crazy like that, which I know is wrong. That number is way too low, and I can tell you it's way too low. There's something wrong with the way they're gathering their statistics, the way they're doing their tests. We're going to hear all about that from Robert in a minute. But this, these are critical issues. Lyme disease yes. doesn't just make your life miserable anymore. It can kill you. And certainly that's true with autoimmune diseases as well. So we need all the information we can get so we can make the best health care decisions for ourselves. And if you have one of these horrible diseases, hopefully this show is going to be a breakthrough for you. So let me introduce our guest. I've got a wonderful little bio here that I want to read to you because Robert, again, is a real stellar person in this field. And I'm so happy to have him on the show. He's a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist. He has training in naturopathy, homeopathy, and nutrition, and he brings a wealth of knowledge, experience, and training to the natural healing arts of acupuncture, naturopathy, homeopathy, herbology, and the teaching of yoga and meditation. He began his healing arts training in 1973 with the study of meditation, and he also learned the power of this ancient healing art when he had his own powerful transformational healing experience. After that, he began a decade of extensive travel and studies with numerous spiritual teachers and healers from around the world. Now, also, he, this is incredible stuff. He's developed his own system of healing, including Clearpoint Acupuncture, NeuroClear, and pulse clear. These are all leading edge mm. systems that he has devised himself. They're tremendously effective. Robert, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be Pleasure here. Pleasure to have you. Pleasure to have you here. We have so much to talk about. Oh, first, yes. how, how did you get into this? How did you make this turn into the healing arts? Yeah, I wanted to save this story for you. You asked me before. Um, yes. Well, I originally, when I was in college, I, uh, I was going to school to become a lawyer. And about uh, somewhere about the second year, maybe year and a half, you know, the stress of it all, I was, I was, you know, studying meditation and doing yoga. First ashram actually to ever open up in the United States. People don't realize about, you know, yoga and, uh, you know, meditation is that just like we sent, uh, you know, Christian, uh, you know, priests and stuff to, uh, you know, third world countries, etc. to, you know, introduce them to that. Uh, religion, um, that's what they did. They sent people over here, and Dr. Mishra was one of the first that came to this country, opened up an ashram. And so I was studying at his ashram, and uh, he was one of those teachers that can do Shaktipat, which is, means he can oh. transfer the experience of connecting with God to you while you're in his class. And so, you know, people who know that, you go to his class, you wait for that moment yeah. where he where he chooses you and pew, you get the bliss. So I, I was studying there. Um, it, was, it was called the Ananda Ashram in Monroe, New York. And a, a doctor from California had come. And this was in... Um, 76, 77, like 77, 1977. And so acupuncture was not something that anyone had really ever heard of. I certainly didn't hear of it. But this, you know, guest doctor, had. it was a beautiful fall day. You know, the leaves coming down, we were next to the pond, and it was, the sun was shining, it was really warm. And they, they you know, this. she put this guy down on a blanket outside and did some acupuncture. Well, you know, now we, you know, we understand acupuncture, we've had acupuncture, but we just stared at this guy for like 30 minutes, like we were watching TV. It's like, wow. Wow, he's got like needles in him. Like, you know, that's, you know, we just stared at him. It was just the strangest thing. I didn't think of it, you know, at the time. I just thought, oh my God, he's got needles stuck in him and he's not, you know, he's not upset. He's not crying or whatever. Yeah, he's not flinching. And, yeah. No, and so afterwards, you know, I'm walking next to him, we're walking down this, you know, nice trail along the lake. I said, what was that like? 
he said, well, I feel, I feel calm. I feel centered. I, I just feel balanced and relaxed. And those words kind of poured over me like, you know, just like ambrosia, like, really? You can have that feeling? <laughs> just by laying on the ground and have needles stuck in you? And, and the thing was, I never for one second thought, I want to get acupuncture. That, that didn't occur to me at all. The, it just came over me like, that's what I want to do for people. I want to no, do acupuncture. So I went back, you know, went to my, um, you know, guidance counselor or whatever, whatever they're called in college. And I said, listen, I, I need to change my major. I need to, I want to be an acupuncturist because she looked at me like I was a little crazy. And I <laughs> said, yes, yeah, what I want to do. So, of course, I, I spent six years in college and, you know, instead of the standard four because uh, I had to catch up on all the stuff that I wasn't doing. But that was the genesis. And I uh, I really didn't get acupuncture or see any acupuncture till after I'd finished college and went to Boston and, you know, to go to school there. And even my first year of school, I don't think I had acupuncture. It was just I wanted to do acupuncture. So that's how – that's what started the whole ball rolling. Incredible! Wow. And that little that experience you you know you're talking about I, I I get that bio I remember it's from somewhere I don't know my website or something but <laughs> yes, um, your website yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I I you know when you were saying oh I had this transformative experience well you know why they get into this was really you know because of that experience with seeing acupuncture but prior to that way back when transcendental meditation so this was when I was 16 years old. I had an ulcer, very stressful, you know, family life and school life, and uh, friend, you know, I was eating mashed. But this is what they had: mashed potatoes and milk, Ooh. you know, and butter. That's what you <laughs> wow. got when you had an ulcer, like, okay, yeah. which is really kind of the worst thing you could do to yourself. But that's what they recommended. And it wasn't getting better, and so a friend of mine kind of hippie kind of guy, he came up to me. He said, "Oh, you know what? Maybe you should try meditation." So I went. And um, to do the TM, and uh, that's when you got a flower, a piece of fruit, a white handkerchief, and thirty-five bucks. Now I think oh. it's, you know, your your left hand. You give hand. them the flower. What was <laughs> yeah. that? You pay you pay them the money. You give them the flower. <laughs> yeah, you you go there. You do this whole thing. Now it's like I don't know. It's like thousands of dollars to learn yeah. what I learned. But here's the here's the part where about the transformational experience, is you know I went to the thing. They gave you you know they give you a mantra. They show you how to you know you know use the mantra and meditate. Put me in a room, close my eyes. I start doing the mantra and pff, white light. Oh, my God. It was like, it. like, holy cow. And I'm like, I was there, and I'm just like in this this, this ecstasy experience. And this was, you know, I went like, and I got, I'm not going to let anybody know what my, my secret mantra is, even after all these years. But, I, you know, I'm doing my mantra. You're not supposed um, to share it. Yep. You can't share it, you know. And, um, uh, and then the guy comes in. I thought, wow, that was like two seconds. And he says, okay, well, you know, that was your 20 minutes. How was it? And I told the guy what, you know, what happened. He goes, wow. he goes, he looks at me, he goes, oh, no, you, you have to meditate for 20 years to have that experience. And I said, but I just had it. He goes, he just couldn't get around it. He says, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. And, of course, that was a weird thing to hear. But, um, you know, so that started me. And I, I literally, just so people want to know about just meditation, uh, I did that meditation 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon. After two weeks, no ulcer, gone, ah, gone for good. I mean, I think I worked at a steakhouse. I used to hide, you know, my time to do my meditation. I used to hide behind the <laughs> stacks of, you know, potatoes in the back room, and I'd be there, you know, doing my doing my uh, my mantra, and I, I just did it, and 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 so even today, uh, you know, things get a little bit, uh, you know, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I will I will go back to that. It's a great tool. That's so, wonderful to know. That's the genesis. That's, that's the genesis. That's great. And the mind-body connection, clearly we can't ignore it, even though we, we do want to know from you about treatment and things mm -hmm. that you use for these uh, two categories of illnesses, that the mind-body connection is paramount. And we're going to get more into that, too. But for now, I know you've had some good success 
with patients. And let's start off with Lyme, if we could, because I know you have a perspective on this. You take a look at Lyme and you take a look at the patient. What what do you see? What do you see happening with Lyme? Do you see more cases of it, more severe severity with it? I mean, what do you what are you seeing today? Well, you know, Lyme is a very old disease. They they literally f- found Borrelia, which is the uh, the bacteria that causes Lyme disease, in the Paleolithic uh, guide. It was frozen. This was about ten years ago. Wow. Um, yeah, they found them. They they found the Borrelia. So it's really an uh, you know it's an older disease, and and that's an important thing to understand because, um, I mean, you always have mutations, and of course with antibiotics. The, yep. you know every bacteria becomes resistant it mutates so it has become a um, stronger strain you know since they first started diagnosing and treating it with antibiotics but it has been around for a long time and just like any um, any infectious disease um, groups of people people become immune to it and then some people aren't immune to it so there's one reason why some people just they get bit they get Borrelia they have a fever and it feels like a cold and then it goes away and there's there's not nothing really left you know for mm-hmm. them to do there and then other people it is as you said just life threatening um mm-hmm. and that life threatening uh has to do with the person mm. um are they toxic are they exposed to a lot of chemicals um are they you know uh emotionally stressed is there a lot of uh you know things to deal with there um uh, do they have other diseases that you know that also uh, strain the immune system and all those things play into how a person responds to to Lyme you know to borrelia and all, all the right. co-infections yes now today uh it seems like the Western blot test, which is the accepted traditional test, is not all that accurate. At least that's what I'm hearing. But there are tests that are more accurate than Western blot, like iGenix has one that I hear is, is leading edge. What are your thoughts on the tests? You know, the Western blot is, it's, it's, is, it's very accurate. It's as accurate as a coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what. <laughs> oh, great. That's an eye opener. And that's the truth. The um the CDC um I, I can't remember how long ago they might have taken it down, um but where they were training doctors, uh, I mean within a decade, you know, I think seven, eight, nine years ago, there was a training for doctors. I took it for how to treat. Lyme disease. What are you supposed to do? Um, and it's a very straight, that's before even the post sequela Lyme um, diagnosis that they kind of acquiesce to so that people can get a little bit more antibiotics for more than the, the four, the three to four standard weeks. Um, but what they said in, in that meeting was uh, to doctors is do not use the test. You have too many false positives, too many uh, false negatives, and so you're either treating someone who shouldn't be treated or you're not treating someone who should be treated. And so their recommendation was use the symptoms. And I think that's still, um, e- even in, in for people who don't do muscle testing or any other kind of um, you know, EV testing, um, that's the standard is you want to follow the symptoms. Now, and what so, are the symptoms that you see for Lyme? Well, the symptoms are going to be, um, well, well, Lyme leads to all symptoms, and that's just a fact. If someone comes wow. in, I've had people sit there literally for an hour and a half and just go over. I have this symptom. I have crawlies under the skin. I have headaches. I got fatigue. I have joint pain. I have rashes. I have even the bullseye, which is used to be, a, they used to say, well, if you see a bullseye, that was in that meeting. That's the classic uh, one. That's the yeah. classic. Oh, then you want to treat them right away. But the bullseye doesn't always show up. It doesn't show up. In fact, I, I mean, in my practice, I may see it, you know, one out of, you know, 20, 30, 40 times. Mm-hmm. You know, but I do see rashes, uh, mm-hmm. you know, joint pain, fatigue, this, you know, the cold that never ends, the exhaustion that never mm-hmm. ends. Um, uh, then other things start getting triggered. Anything that they had before is now worse. Mm-hmm. And I say, this is what I, I like to look at it because I have suffered severely with Lyme. Out of the 25 years that I've been treating Lyme disease, I started in Nantucket, which at the time that I was there was a hotbed of Lyme disease. Um, And I think there's a gift to it. There's a gift that 
it will go to every part of your body that is weakest. So whatever mm. disease you have had, whatever your genetic disposition is to have a disease, autoimmune disorders, uh, anything, it will go there. It will find that place. And I say it's up to us to go, all right, let me look at that. Let me take care of it. Let me fix that. If you're eating junk food, and let me tell you, that's one of the first things I tell people, sugar. Borrelia loves sugar. Your Uh-oh. Body, your body doesn't like sugar. And mm-hmm. it's a debilitating drug. You know, William, ah. Duff, William Dufty wrote, the, you know, the sugar blues, I mean, way back in the 70s. It might have even been copyrighted in the 60s. And he, he delineated long ago that, that sugar, which we now, cane sugar. Good old fashioned cane sugar, which now is sold in a health food store as a health <laughs> as a health food product. Because, it's you know, better because, for you, right? Yeah, it's, it's, what it's, you're it's, saying is, it's good for Borrelia, is what it's oh, good they for. Love it. It's it's just like you know, can, cancer and Borrelia love sugar, and oh. of course your body becomes depleted and debil- debilitated from sugar, and so I tell people don't do that. That's that's not a good mm-hmm. thing. And so people who are you know junk food junkies, they're like what i can't have you know i can't have refined sugar i can't have refined bread i can't have this I said, well you know at least not until you get better and hopefully by then you know the borelli has taught you a lesson that these are not good for your body things that are not good for your body um support just the destruction that lime will you know present to you if you just let it go unchecked right so diet is very important in this so that's a, one of the first things you discuss with people is if they're sugar junkies or if they're eating food that isn't really good for them. Is that like a step-by-step that you go through? Because I know we had a question from somebody. Let me grab that um, about this very thing. Is there an order to the way that you address right. getting well from Lyme disease or even autoimmune? I mean, is there something that you recommend that people do First, second, third. How do you handle that? That's a good question. Yeah, okay. Well, the three stages, you know, I always present this. The three stages of treating Lyme is first stage, um, suppress. I use the word suppress. Um, Think about uh, herpes, that you never get rid of the virus, you know, when you get stressed, when you get a cold. That's why they call them cold sores. When your immune system is down, you know, that herpes virus will come out. But when your immune system is strong, well, you don't know you have herpes. It's, it's not an issue. Borrelia is very similar in that it will stay in your system. It can form a cyst. It can form a biofilm. And, and that system biofilm, the Borrelia goes into when you become strong enough and, and you could – you could dissolve those cysts and biofilms, but that's the mechanism where it hides in your body. That's another reason why using antibiotics is not a very useful um, thing to do, especially un- unless it's the first you know, couple of weeks, the first time you've been bit. I'll tell people, go straight to the, you know, your doctor, get the doxy, do that. Um, not my favorite thing to say, but that's a, it's an effective thing. And it's but, inexpensive too. Doxycycline yeah. is one of the yeah, and original you know, you're, antibiotics. You're, 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 so you're insured. You know, right. you probably got a nice little copay. So I think that's a reasonable <laughs> thing to do. Um, yes. But after that, now the Borrelia is deep into your system. It has the ability to hide. It kind of changes its DNA. It hides from your immune system. And so what we need to do is we need to get your immune system to see the Borrelia. The analogy I always make is your your immune system is in a dark room and it has a bat and you have all your precious things in that room that you can't see, but the Borrelia has night goggles on and can see you. So you start swinging. Your immune system starts swinging. And this is the onset of, of autoimmune disease. You start swinging. So instead of actually attacking the bacteria that you're after, you're breaking your favorite china, you're destroying your liver, you're destroying your, you know, pancreas. I went very quickly from china to to internal organs, but that's yes. what's happening. So <laughs> in China's the, replaceable. <laughs> um, a couple organs are too, but you know. Um, you so, want to so have to have that happen. You don't want to do that. So the, you know, so the first thing in stage one is you want to weaken the Borrelia. So by using, uh, you know, different products, TL-free cat's claw, monolaurin, 
you know, different antimicrobials, you can create an environment that they're not thriving in. So they're kind of weak. You got them on the ropes. But your immune system ultimately is your defender. And so what you need to do is then educate your immune system, kind of turn on the bright lights so that you can see what you're swinging at. And that is done through homeopathics, basically Borrelia nosodes, um, where you make a, a remedy out of the Borrelia. And that basically, once you, uh, you know, homeopathically uh, utilize that remedy, your immune system starts to see the genetic composition of Borrelia. And it starts now be able to attack the Borrelia instead of just this wild attacking anywhere where it sees inflammation, mm -hmm. which Borrelia causes a lot of information, inflammation. Yes, yes. Yes, because my understanding with Lyme is it can get into your brain. It can go anywhere. There's nothing to stop it. And no, it, becomes, it will go it anywhere. Very dangerous. It, it yeah. will. Yes. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Nora Lyme is a horrible experience. I know I had it. Um, you know, the anxiety, the, the brain fog, the, uh, the sensations that run through your body, you know, nerve, weird nerve sensations that get triggered. They're not even real things that are happening. It's just the nerves are kind of telling you, oh. There's something going on there, but there's nothing. You look there, there's nothing there. There's nothing to um, see. Yeah, yeah, so that's, you know, neural lines that. So we got phase one, right? So we want to do that education and mm -hmm. basically give your immune system what it needs, the support it needs to, to do what it does with any microbe, is basically take it out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a question for you. I, I know there was a, a wonderful book that scared the crap out of me. I think it was called Lab 452. It was about the weaponization of ticks and how the ticks left this island outside of New York City via deer, which they never expected deer to carry these ticks off the island, and that that was the beginning of the onslaught of what we're seeing today with Lyme disease. Do you think it's been weaponized? Have you seen anything that would support that? theory well I've heard the theory you know quite a bit people come in um, but I you know like I said at the beginning uh, we have found Borrelia way back when can you weaponize anything I'm sure why do it I know there's a lot of theories there but uh, you know despite the theory it, it ultimately doesn't matter it's still there we still need to treat it so that's how I see exactly it. You know, just yeah I'm a clinician you know um, Yes. <laughs> so phase two. Which is good that you are, otherwise we yes. lose hope very quickly. <laughs> right. So. Um, yeah, so phase two, so now that we've educated the immune system, now it has a shot, just like it does with every other bacteria, um, which Borrelia is not like every other bacteria. It's a very sneaky spirochete bacteria, um, type bacteria. Um, so phase two is repair and restore. Now, repair and restore, the repair part um, is Borrelia basically leaves toxins. You know, when it dies, it's a, it's, it's, it's a toxin that our body has a, a difficulty in getting rid of. Um, just like a brown recluse uh, has, you know, has venom that when you get bit, it, it keeps necrotizing the tissue and it keeps growing and growing um, and it's it can horrible. cause, yeah, it's horrible because your body cannot neutralize that toxin. Um, now, fortunately, the Borrelia is, is not that, you know, virulent, but it is very difficult for our bodies to get rid of. So a lot of these aches and pains, this post sequela, people say, oh, you know, it's been a year and I still got these, these pains here and there, is that, and, and many people just like everything, can deal with those toxins, and many people can't. So that's the spectrum of severity. Um, right. And so it's very important to get rid of those toxins to assist the body um, into being able to neutralize those toxins so that the tissues, you know, that's, that's repair, can start to restore themselves, which can take a long time. Um, it's, it's almost like microscopic scar tissue that forms around this toxin. Um, and when Gosh. that toxin is when that toxin is in your blood, that's what they'll call a you know a herx or a you know when you start killing off uh, the Borrelia either with antibiotics or homeopathy or any you know any other natural way as well. Um, that herx that detoxification is very severe in Lyme disease. So um, hang on to that thought because we want to yeah. talk more about that. 
And what we're going to do right now, everybody, is take a very short commercial break, and then we're going to come back and continue this conversation with our wonderful guest tonight, Robert Abatello. You can find him at clearpointacupuncture.com. Again, that's clearpointacupuncture.com. So stay tuned, everybody. You're listening to Supernatural Girls Radio, and we will be right back. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker. I am here with my co-host, Patricia Kirkman, PK, and our guest today, a very special guest. We are talking about some very serious health concerns. We know that people in our audience are facing some of these challenges, and we are thrilled to have Robert Avatello on the air with us today. We are talking about Lyme right now and how to get rid of it. It's no easy process. So Robert, please continue. Tell us the rest of how you work with a patient and how to deal with this Borrelia that is so sneaky. Sneaky Pete. Yeah. So um, got that. So the uh, we're in phase two. So uh, the repair part basically involves a lot of detoxification, getting rid of those toxins out, um, repairing the tissues, you know, strengthening the immune system, and you know, it, it's very much just like if someone came in and said, "I have a knee problem." It's just, at that point, it's like, okay, we're we're going to treat your knee problem, um, whether it's injury from you know from a trauma or it's injury from the Lyme. At that point, it's just inflammation, and if you you don't take care of it, it's your knee, your joint's going to start disintegrating. That's that's arthritis. So, um, our, so that's the next thing is you're basically restoring yourself, making yourself healthy, and that's a process. If you quit somewhere along the line, a lot of people will say, you know what, I'm in pain, but I'm okay. You know, I can go back to work. I, I can sleep. I sleep pretty good. Um, you know, and, and they're like just, they're okay. They've kind of created a baseline where uh, I'm functional. Uh, right. That, you know, then they kind of say, well, I'm done. That You're not done. And the problem with not being done is that the third phase, which is maintenance, you're not even there yet. What can you? Right. What do you want? You want to maintain, you know, bare bare functionality, um, but that restoration is about making yourself healthy, exercising, doing yoga, eating well, you know, creating good social environment, creating you know good relationships. All those things really matter because they matter to your immune system, and your immune system is the front line against this disease. Your immune system is the front line against any disease. Um, right. And when and in an autoimmune disease, that front line has been corrupted. It's like you you know your immune system is really a terrible person in relationship. It doesn't know what it's supposed to be doing. It's making bad choices. It's attacking uh, your organs, your muscles. It's attacking you instead of attacking this thing that's invading you. And the confusion there. So to unconfuse that, you really need to uh, basically give your immune system therapy. How funny! I love that. <laughs> you know, you're that's what you're doing, <laughs> and and so you're you're you know, it's this it's this sense with Borrelia, is that the gift is it's going to tell you, um, you know, like a good uh, you know, I'm a guy, so I'm going to say like a good wife will tell you when you're. When you're being a jerk, like listen, you're being, <laughs> you're being a jerk. Don't do that. That's not right. very nice. You know, wake up, and you know, and and you start that relationship. You start working on, uh, you know, being a better person. And so Borelli is kind of asking you, be a better person, be a healthy person. And so right. once you've gone through that process, then phase three is maintenance. You want to stay healthy, mm -hmm. and just because you get a cold doesn't mean you're going to get you know, Lyme disease again, you know, just because you gain some weight doesn't mean you're going to get Lyme again. But, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a line there somewhere that you want to maintain of, of health. Um, right. So those are the three phases. That's the project. And within mm -hmm. the, all those sections are, you know, various things that you need to do. Well, it's, again, it's a commitment. I mean, it's, and it's not easy, I think, for people who have Lyme when they feel so terrible. I mean, it's like when you're at your worst, you're expected to be your best is how I look at it. You're really asking a lot of these people, taking all these supplements, changing their diet, getting you know the proper rest. But there's no other alternative. If they want to get well, it's a comprehensive system that has to be in place, right? Yeah, it is. And, and a lot of people have been... Um... 
uh, let's say duped. I wanted to use that word. I was trying not to use. It. They've been duped into believing that by taking antibiotics, you know, um, you know, having a pick in your arm for months and months and then years and years, um, that they're getting better. But they're they're not getting better. I remember right. walking. I remember walking into the bank when I was really sick. I'm like, you know, wobbling because my knees wouldn't bend, and you know, I mm. walk up to the cashier, and she's, you know, she's, oh, what's the matter, you know? And um, I said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of working with Lyme disease right now. It's pretty bad. And, oh, and she was so excited. She says, oh, I have Lyme disease too. And I said, really? She says, yeah. In fact, a couple, like ten days ago, um, I was on my third round of, of, you know, intravenous antibiotics, and uh, well, it's coming back. So the doctor's going to ah. put it, put it oh, back Lord. in there. And I'm like, that's that's not healthy. And I, I still see her today, and she's she's still suffering. Oh you know? no. And um, so that treatment is is really it's it's not an effective treatment. And if you think it is, then you're going to lose this really great benefit. If you do have, you know, you've been chosen by the universe to have Lyme disease, um, right? To move on, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to be said for this. Now, do you have some special homeopathics that you like? Because I know I've talked to you in the past about the German ones that are terrific but have been banned, uh, some of them, and they can't even get them in this country. So do you have a specific brand or brands that you work with that you think are up to this task? Yeah, in fact, the, the, um, uh, the dinner lecture that I went to last night in Boston, um, Desbio, that's, that's the company, Desbio, um, they really specialize in infectious diseases and detoxification, which is why that lecture was really, you know, it was nice to get a little refresher. Um, uh, but I like their products. But for every single person, like I'll give you an example. Someone comes in, they certainly have Lyme disease, but the Epstein bar, um, you know, that they got when they were young, uh, most people know it as, as mono. Um, has kind of risen up. So their primary um, symptomology would be, you know, exhaustion and fatigue. They just, you know. And so at that point, do I treat Lyme disease? Do I treat Epstein-Barr? And yeah, because which I, one? Yeah, because I'm a muscle tester, um, I get to ask the person's body through muscle testing, where do we start? And where do you mm -hmm. start is the great, great question of healing. Because um, mm -hmm. there is a sequence of things. Um, if I, if you want to, you know, people come in, they got like, you know, 20 different symptoms and I said, well, we're going to work on this. They go, but what about that? What about that? Well, if I throw 10 balls at you, well, you may catch one, but you'll probably drop them all. And the same yeah. thing, if you ask your immune system, like, listen, I want to take care of Epstein-Barr, I want to take care of Bartonella, I want to take care of Borrelia, and you try and do it all at once, well, the immune system doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. and it gets confused and you're not going to get the same result so you really need to be specific and the whole spectrum of infections um, can be present mm -hmm. because we are you know our body that's our environment you know if you go to Mexico uh, you can't eat the food they can eat right. the food you yeah. can't eat the food they're used to it right. so part of the process is you getting used to what it is this infection that's in your body and you will get used to it and you can get used to it and so how you start to do that is just kind of tricky business but as a muscle tester I kind of create that sequence and say we're going to go after this we're going to go after that and then it's a process of unraveling and then making sure that as you unravel the toxins that are being uh, created by you know viruses and bacteria dying um, and, and your immune system basically trying to get resources from your body um, all those things need to be cleaned up they need to be addressed and every single person is different um, mm. I'm, I'm sure I could be some kind of famous doctor if I had three jars of something I said here you know take yeah. these three things you know, get back right, to me in a month fine. you'll be fine yeah I right. mean it's, it's it's not happening and it right. won't happen. So that that's kind of the process of, of you know, how do how do I choose? And then another mistake based on you know in in relationship to that, people bring in boxes of stuff. I tell them to is it bring in all your supplements, and you know right. they they're taking twenty thirty things at a time. Well, um, I've never read about a supplement I didn't want to take. They're all great. Yeah. 
you know, <laughs> you know, and I make the same. I make the same mistake. Believe me, once this starts piling up on my counter at home, my wife says, "You gotta, you gotta straighten this out." And then she'll be a surrogate muscle tester, and I go through everything, and lo and behold, it's like five things. I had twenty on the on the table. Only five of them are useful for me at that time, so I put the other right. ones aside. So, so that is a process. It's it's kind of a complicated process. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. And you have to, I think, as a patient, you have to be take your own responsibility here. You've got to do your 100% with the practitioner because years ago, you know, we used to think of MDs were minor deities. MD, that's what it stood for. You know, we just <laughs> worshiped these people. They were going to heal us and wave their magic wand of pharmaceuticals and we were going to be all better. And now in this society, we are sicker than ever before. We're yeah. taking more medication than ever before. It doesn't work. That's a bad relationship. We need to own up to our diet. Right. We need to own up to taking these supplements, doing the proper kind of exercise if we can, if we're well enough to exercise. So you become a partner with your practitioner rather than just uh, give me the next me- you know, medicine that you think is going to heal me. And, and you have to participate, right? right? Well, they're not gods. That's the no. difference. We used to think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to jump out of an airplane, you know, the first time. You know, right. baby right. steps. What you can do is what you can do. And I'm one of those practitioners that if you, you know, you come back to me and say, listen, I know you told me not to eat potato chips, but I ate like 10 bags. <laughs> okay, you did. I understand that. You know, perfection is not the goal, you know, but moving forward is the goal. So why'd you eat the right. potato chips? You know, sometimes I, I have to talk to people almost like I'm a therapist. Well, why'd you eat those 10 bags of potato chips? <laughs> you, you know, and, and then, we, you know, we talk about it. So, like, okay, mm-hmm. I, I think I can maybe, you know, have one bag of potato chips and eat some celery. And, you know, we negotiate. You know, <laughs> doctors very often um, have a complex. They think they are yeah. God. They think they know everything. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's understandable. You could, If you can save somebody's life, and they, you know, they do. They save people's yeah. life. My life's been right. saved. Uh, I have gratitude for that, uh, and I have appreciation for that. Um, but you know, they used a hammer to save my life. But you know, maybe next time I, I you know, I need a, a saw or a chisel, <laughs> and they don't have one, so they're gonna hit me with a hammer. It's, it's right. not gonna work. But I, I tell my patients, listen, you're the boss mm-hmm. of me. I'm your, I'm a consultant. I tell you, I give you my best advice. You do what you the best you can do. And if you come back and say, okay, I did this and that. What else do I do? I say, okay, let's let's try this, and we keep going. Mm-hmm. Your doctor should have the same relationship with you. You're, right. you know, you're your doctor's boss. You're paying mm-hmm. him. You hired him. Let me That's tell right. you, if we, if we went to a cash system, like you mm-hmm. pay your doctor, like people pay me. It's, yeah. you know, I, I take very little insurance. Um, if you paid your doctor, they would go broke. They, they would go out of business because if you walked in there, and you might not understand this, but every time you see your doctor, it's $300. Easy, yeah. yeah. You know, Easy. I mean, that's True. just a basic, you know, twelve-minute thing. Yeah. If you went in there for twelve for twelve minutes and paid them three hundred dollars, and they said, oh, "I don't know, we'll run this test, or you know, just just hang in there, or just keep taking that drug. I know it's bothering you, but just keep taking it. You'll get used to it." Um, you you wouldn't go back. No. And you know, so there's this relationship you need to create that's real. Like, hey, you work for me. This is what I want to do. I don't want to take that drug. What's what else can I do? Right. What can you do for me? And I think that there'll be, uh, um, you know, that would be, a, a, even though you're using insurance, you could still have that relationship. My yes. doctors are wonderful people. I love them. I go in, mm-hmm. I say, listen, doc, I think I got Lyme disease. Yeah, well, I'll run a test. I know it's not accurate. Let's run it anyways. Let's run a bunch of tests. Um, you know, I know your patients. They, some of them come to me and you've treated them. Treat yourself. I'll monitor you. I will run a test that you need. I'll wow. take care of you. And I go back and I get better. He says, oh, you're doing great. That's wonderful. You know, that all your tests look better. This looks good. That's, That's the kind terrific. of relationship yeah. that you should have with a doctor. So I encourage exactly. people to do that. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's absolutely great advice. So let's move on to autoimmune disease because mm-hmm. that you've mentioned before. It's You said it's like having a bad relationship where the immune system isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. So how, again, do you address that? Is it the same protocol? Is it 
different than Lyme disease? Ultimately, it's the same. I mean, Lyme disease will create an autoimmune disease or trigger um, excuse me, will trigger an auto, you know, your, you know, some nascent autoimmune disease that you may have in your genetic code, it can kick it off. But according mm -hmm. to epige epigenetics, you could undo that as well. You know, just because you're, mm, okay. you know, you've triggered it doesn't mean you can't untrigger it. There, you know, there is a line of, you know, there's a point of no return, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's not for me to say where that line is, but I know after, you know, treating, uh, you know, a multitude of people with MS, that the people who come to me in the beginning when they're just starting to have symptoms and, you know, this tingling and that tingling or, you know, whatever the symptom is, um, you know, they've been diagnosed, you know, there's a lesion present. Um, those people I can work really well with because it's mm -hmm. at the beginning. We're very close. Right. Once you're, you know, in a wheelchair or, you know, worse, uh, it becomes more difficult. I never give up hope, no matter what. There mm -hmm. are, there's always a miracle around the corner. There's always right. something that can be done. Um, but it does become difficult. I mean, it's just yes. make it simple. If you're gaining weight, it's a whole lot easier to lose 10 pounds than 100 pounds. Exactly. And exactly. It's, the, it's the same thing. Can you lose 100 pounds? Absolutely, you can do it. Um, mm -hmm. But, it, you know, kind of go get there sooner. And if people get to an alternative practitioner, a natural healer, um, sooner they're going to get the best result. Don't wait. I, I, it's, yes. it's, always, it's always sad when, you know, it's, you know, my doctor says I have a week left to live. What can you do for me? You know, go home spend time with your family yeah. it's it's hard mm -hmm. so my encouragement right. is you know a little symptom just keep it that way you know keep it that way but autoimmune right. autoimmune disorders um as treated in western medicine is they just say hey you got a bad immune system it's attacking your own whatever it is whether you have you know crohn's or, or ra or or scleroderma whatever it is it's attacking your system some system within you because it became so confused it just started attacking you instead of what it was supposed to do. And, you know, right. that comes from leaky gut. That comes from toxicity. That comes from, you know, nutritional deprivation. You know, we live in a country where, you know, you could get anything you want, but we still have nutritional deprivation because if you take a food that's broken, you know, white bread, white flour, uh, processed things, things with chemicals, that, that will break you. Interesting. You, you yeah. will become nutritionally deficient because mm -hmm. even though there's availability, you're not taking advantage of. You're actually taken out of the bank more than you're putting in the bank. You know, and that so, is so true. Oh, wow. Yes. That's that what a valid so point. Yeah. You don't pay attention. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about mono. Uh, uh, my one son had mono when he was in high school and to the point that they hospitalized him for about three or four days. And because of that, is he more susceptible to something like this taking place in his system down the road? No, it would be the opposite. If he did get Lyme disease, it could activate the mono. Oh, okay. It could, it could you know, the immune system can only, can only do so many things, right? Yeah. And so then the mono rises up. Mm -hmm. um, it tends to be, um, you know, e easier to to then put it back in its place because okay. your immune system did it once and now all it needs is the resources and the wherewithal to do that again and then you move on to the to the next infection you move on to detoxification and so back to the you know the all autoimmune diseases um, there is a toxicity issue the brain needs to communicate through the nervous system, you know, to the cells, to the matrix. Right. And when there's right. toxicity, that's not happening. Right. Um, for instance, with, with, you know, with, um, with women and their menstrual cycle, this is a real important hormonal, uh, you know, exchange. Your body is one person this part of the month and another person this part of the month. Well, if you have right. things that block those hormone receptor sites, that that transition becomes hard. The message isn't getting there. 
and mm-hmm. and so that's the cause of of this imbalance of you know going through those cycles that mm-hmm. for many women are very easy it's a process they just go through it and for many women they suffer that's an issue of toxicity and mm. the same thing uh, you know with autoimmune disorders you're getting poor signaling poor messaging because not only does the brain need to tell you know the cells whether they're immune cells or or inside your cell it should be detoxifying or making energy whatever but the cell needs to communicate to the brain hey i i need this i need this thing i need this this nutrient the, right. this mineral so that i can accomplish this Mm-hmm. And if and so the brain doesn't hear it, or the brain says, "Oh, you know that thing that you do in school where you whisper to someone, yeah. uh, you yeah. know something at the end, it's something mm-hmm. else." Well, right. this is what's happening um, when you become, um, you know, where there's toxins involved. Which, believe me, we are exposed. Oh, I mean, yeah. if you're driving in a car, well, forget if it's a new car. There's toxins, but the car in front of you is spewing thousands of toxins out of the tailpipe that's going right, right into your car there's even if you have the little filter in there that's just a you know that's a particle filter mm. those toxins are molecular and they come in and we're breathing them all the time so we're getting mixed signals you know yes. your cells going help me help me i need this and your brain's going oh you sense send something else mm. down there and so now you've yeah. got this missignaling, and and an autoimmune disorder is a missignaling. So detoxification, you always want to start detoxification. Mm-hmm. Take the pressure off of the person's body. Um, you know whatever it is. You know poor food, poor sleep. Um, you know overactivity, right. underactivity. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you've got to start working those things out, um, and then sooner or later the body starts to create correct signals and those correct signals then start to heal the person and that's how you right. undo that even genetically you're telling your genes oh listen you know yeah that's an okay gene but i'd rather you not express yourself you know go away uh, <laughs> and and, and um, so so that it, it's just that process of healing that, that yes, needs to genetic. take place and it's what is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was okay. just going to ask what you because I know you deal with scleroderma. And I was wondering what is the prevalence of the Lyme disease infection with someone that has scleroderma? Well, I am not a scleroderma specialist, um, although some people wish I were. And um, <laughs> you know, um, because when you're talking about scleroderma, you're talking about like one out of I think it's two hundred and fifty thousand, um, you know, people. And so it's the it's a very interesting thing is every week a disease comes into my office that I never heard of. It's just amazing. 32 years. And somebody says, oh, I have this. And I go, well, let me look that up. And uh, I say, okay, I see it. I'm looking for categories. Where, where is that happening? You know, And even within scleroderma, you have all different kinds of forms of scleroderma. Where, where is it going? Mm-hmm. You know, is it systemic? Is it a local? You know, where is it going? But ultimately, I never look at it in, in a particle form like, oh, you have this thing. It's like, what do I need to do to make you healthy? That's the mm-hmm. goal. You know, and are there important, um, you know, Patricia, you mentioned the Sanum remedies from Germany. Right. Super right. effective, super uh, effective in in um, turning around autoimmune disorders, making the correction, you know. Um, right. N- not the end all and be all, but a really significant thing. You know, uh, yes. you know a cake has many ingredients. You, know, you leave one out, uh, it's not such a good yeah. cake. You know, right. and, and but if you build, you know, you put the ingredients in right and a great chef will make, use the same ingredients. My, my wife watches those shows. I love them too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where they, they get these terrible ingredients like, hey, are you going to make dinner? And like, oh my God, you know, gummy bears in a, you know, in a balloon. Right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so when you, when you put a prescription together, it's, it's like, you know, you want to, you know, with experience, with, um, um, you you can do a better thing like that. So I still look at every autoimmune disease. I used to have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and um, unfortunately, I, I fixed that. That was great. It was certainly by mistake, but I'll take it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I told Patricia. I uh, 
Yeah. I, I took a product and I took way too much, way too much of it because it had expired. And this particular product, these are from Germany, uh, they didn't expire. But I ate a whole box of them and the next day my knee blew up and I used to be able to <laughs> tell people what, when the weather was going to change, um, you know, because I couldn't walk the day before. And I took this stuff and, and the day after I did it, I stayed up kind of late. I woke up, my knee was blown up and... Um, uh, it was pretty rough, and of course, understanding the principles of homeopathy and reversing right. a disorder, you're going back through. You know, you, uh, according to naturopathic understanding, you heal from top to bottom, um, um, from inside to out, and in reverse order. So in this case, it was like in reverse order. I had it, and now I really have it, but it's coming out. And and I, I called my teacher and I said, Oh my God, I think I'm gonna die. What did I do? And he <laughs> you know, I hear this blank, you know, this this statement, you know, like nothing on the phone and I'm like, Are you still there? He goes, Yeah. He said, I'm pretty sure you were at the whole seminar. He said, What part do you think you missed? I said, I didn't miss anything. He goes, Well, tell me what you should do. And then it of course it hit me. I said, Keep going. Mm -hmm. Let the process go. So I said, right. I should take more. He says, take more. Amazing. <laughs> so well, hold more. that thought. We're going to get back to this <laughs> for our last half hour together. This is such an exciting discussion, and I know people are going to benefit so much from hearing from you, Robert. We're so glad you're with us today. So oh, stay yes. tuned, everybody. We are going to take another short break, and we'll be right back. You are listening to Supernatural Girls Radio. All right, guys. Um by the way, Patricia, I think he went a bit over, just so you know. I think I did. I, I oh, said like 25.01, so I don't know how you want to handle that. But. Um, so let's just do the last segment for 24 minutes then. 24? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Let me clear this. All right. Hang on. Is PK, were you able to send me that list? Yeah, I did, honey. That's why I asked you. If that, I, okay. Let's I did this. I, I was doing this to see if you got it. I just stuck my phone up. I don't know where the hell it went. Do you have it? All right. Now, just give me a second. I email if you don't slow. let me know, and I'll resend. <clears throat> okay. I'll just resend it anyway. That's so much. Here it is. You got it. Okay. I resend it just in case. <clears throat> it was on a page where two things, and I went by it the first time. Time, so I went scroll back through it. No, there it is. It's down below. <laughs> <laughs> How come I have okay, this here blank? it is. Questions for Robert's interview. Okay. What's that, Robert? All right. I was wondering why I had this thing, this blank thing that says screener on it. Oh, that's me. That's oh, him. Okay. That's, Joe. <laughs> that's Joe. Joe won't put his picture up there. He, oh. He's worried about terrifying everybody. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> there you go. A, a voice uh -huh. of, of empathy. <laughs> Finally, so I knew it. can't give us any crap all the time about this. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. I don't know he's going to be when he grows up. Okay, so that last, so before we go back, the last question, the prevalence of Lyme disease is infections in scleroderma. Do they go hand in hand? Should we get back to that or not? <clears throat> yes, me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this, what's the next question? Um, do you, do, do you feel we'll, that's, we'll do you feel that's complete, or you, you uh, want to break it down a little bit? Ask me uh, maybe break it down a little bit. Like in your experience, you know, how many people have scleroderma and Lyme? You know, do they go hand in hand. I know for me, I tested positive on both, right? So, yeah, I, I, I really, it's I don't have enough experience. I mean, that was kind of the point okay. I was making, right? It's like one out yeah, of you know so rare that many disease. thousand. So, okay, yeah. so I'll read it. I'll, I'll reiterate the answer there, and because I, I know you also said something about, which I'll also mention on the air, that if you don't heal the Lyme, you can't really heal anything. Right. So that's, yeah, that's it's, the case. It's, it's a significant okay. roadblock to health if you don't right. take care of it, yeah. All right, guys. Okay. All right. Okay. Go, Joe. So we're a go <laughs> in three, two, one. Welcome back, everyone, to Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker. I am here with my co-host, PK. Be sure to visit our Facebook page, Supernatural Girls with a Z, and also The Real Zombie Plague. Right. Both of them on Facebook. Make sure you pay us a visit. Follow us. Like us. We really appreciate your support. And we are supporting you today with a great guest, 
Robert yes. Abatello. He can be found at clearpointacupuncture.com. He also is available for phone consults because I know a lot of our audience is all around the world. And you can find Robert again there, clearpointacupuncture.com. So, Robert, we're talking about autoimmune. And scleroderma is something that you and I have talked about a lot and because I have it. And one of the last questions that PK just asked you is about the prevalence of Lyme disease infections in scleroderma. And as you said, it's a rare disease, scleroderma is, so it's hard to judge and gauge. But certainly something that you told me really stuck, which is if you don't heal the Lyme, you can't heal anything else. Hmm. So. Yeah. And, 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 and that goes back to the fact that I consider Lyme a gift if you know, you're blessed with that. Thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, at the point where this is the thing you're working with, um, it's really about going through all the phases of your life and healing yourself. And, and again, you stop anywhere along the line. You know, I tell people, you know, healing is like getting to the top floor. Um, you know, get into the penthouse. You can stop on the first floor and the second floor, and people do. They go, this is mm -hmm. enough. But really, the ultimate thing is you want to go all, all the way. So I'll have a patient, you know, that has gone all the way, that's really taken it um, to heart, has gone through the therapy, has made sure they've keeping their subs healthy. They come see me every month or two, whatever. They check in. Uh, they make sure they're getting their supplements and they're getting the right ones. And, um, you know, those people, they get bit again. You know, mm. they're out in the woods, they get bit. And they, you know, the first time it happens, they, they their eyes are wide. They're like, oh, my God, I, you know, I don't want to get Lyme again. Um, it's, right. it's not, you know, those people, here, take this, take this, not a problem. I mean, I got bit mm. I don't know, two months ago or something like that. I got bit clearly. It was like a bad bite. So immediately I did the same thing. I took this, I took that, and I'm saying this or that because everybody's different. Um, right. But I, I, I took, you know, I, I took Lime Plus was the product. Um, I took some uh, Monolaurin, um, and I think I took some Cellular Forte Max. Um, and I took a lot more than probably I would prescribe because I don't have that opportunity. I don't want to be, you know, I, I can't get a cold as far as I'm concerned. I need to be here every day. So I just took a right. bunch of it, three days, done. That was two months ago. Wow. No problem. So Wonderful. that's the promise at the end that you're just like a normal person. You can get bit. You do something mm -hmm. for a day or two or a week, and you're done. You're never going to go back. So when that's you really it, terrific. When you come to me and you're that sick, you're never going to get that sick again. But you really got to get to the penthouse of health. You can't <laughs> stop. You can't stop on the second no floor. No shortcuts. No. Yeah, there are and no shortcuts. But away. that's a but yeah. that's a great thing to understand when because people are so afraid, you know. Yeah. And and after a couple of times, they get bit. They call me up. I say, you know, you still got that stuff in your shelf? Yeah. Okay, take it. Call me up in a week if there's a problem. And, you know, I might hear them from a week saying, hey, everything's great, everything's fine. I may not hear back from them until they come to see me a year, a month later, whatever. And they go, oh, yeah, thanks, that was great. Yeah. You know, not, not a problem, not a problem. <laughs> Wait whereas, <laughs> whereas if you called your doctor and said the same mm -hmm. thing, oh, well, you could take a prophylactic dose of antibiotics. I I'm not really right. sure how that's working. I think it's just a... You know, that's a palliative thing to just say, okay, shut up, take this, and, right. you know, leave me alone. What else um, can they do? Yeah. Yeah, right. And, and if you take a course of antibiotics, what you've done is you're going back to where you shouldn't go. You're mm -hmm. starting to create um, a resistant strain of Borrelia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's you're also not creating what, problems with your gut. Yeah, yeah, everything. Oh, here's an interesting thing that's super important because one of the things you need and one of the things in, in that process, the, the repair and restore, and actually the first phase, you know, where you're working with the, uh, the infection itself and educating right. immune systems, you need the energy to do it. Well, guess yeah. what? These little mitochondria, which is in every cell of your body. It's that little thing that creates energy, your little ATP mm -hmm. generator. Little battery. Yeah. yeah, it's your little battery in every cell. That is an ancient bacteria. No we, kidding. We, we formed a symbiotic relationship with this as we evolved. Wow. You know, you know, and, and so when you take an antibiotic, you're affecting that mitochondria. Mm. And we, we, we can, you know, when you're young, you have a lot of juice. 
you know, yeah. little kids, they run around, blah, 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 yeah. you know, and then you get around 25 <laughs> and you're like, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, that mitochondria is starting to mellow out. Let's, let's be nice. Right. It's, mellow, it's mellowing out. What they found, down. yeah, if you, if you know, go to a nursing home, um, you know, somebody's acting up, they're having a bad day. They're, you know, there are a lot of reasons why, you know, people are, are, are not cooperating, you know, right. as, as such. Well, well, you can send them out for a psych evaluation, or you can go, oh, I think uh, this person might have a cold or a little cough or something. Give them an antibiotic. It's much easier to prescribe an antibiotic really quick, really fast. You give, you give someone in their 70s, 80s, or 90s an antibiotic, they will go to sleep on you in a second. It's like yeah. a sedative. It's As like a sedative. Works, it's yeah. because that mitochondria, the little bit of energy that they're pumping out becomes just not even enough to stay awake. So oh we know that the damage of, of antibiotics is not just, you know, everybody says, oh, I took, a, I took a probiotic. Well, that's really nice. And, of course, the gastroenterologists, <laughs> made, they made that concession, right? Because right, um, did. I, can't, I can't remember what's her name, but she did the, um, the, the little yogurt commercial. Uh-huh. Yeah, so she said, oh, guess what? If you take this little thing of yogurt. Um, oh, yeah, the Align, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. your gut will be great. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she got in and, trouble and for that. She got in trouble. They pulled the ad. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It's the absolute truth. Your gut is 60, 70% of your immune system. And so it was true, and that's those commercials. You know, they they came back and said, "Oh, it's just good. It's healthy for you." And they didn't say why anymore. They just said, "Oh, it right. tastes good. It's good for you." But then they came back and they started using that little that little diagram that has the little bacteria running around, uh, mm -hmm. you know, through through your gut. Um, and so then, <laughs> all, you know, good. Yeah, yeah. So and they, you know, so because it's a scientific fact. If I know it. And I've known it for 20 years that even the worst doctor on the planet has to know it by now. Oh, yes. It's yes. on the TV. So now you, you go to your gastroenterologist and you go, oh, you know, I have gut problems and I took an antibiotic and I have, you know, gut problems. And they go, oh, well, take a probiotic. That's, that was a couple of years ago. Now right. they're going, well, take a probiotic while you're taking an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's useful. It's more important afterwards to restore the gut, right. um, you know, and if you don't have a uh, um, uh, appendix, which is where your body stores its nascent probiotics, so you get mm -hmm. sick, you know, whatever goes through you, and then your nascent probiotic comes out. So if you don't have an appendix, that's a little rough, and you really do need to take care of uh, finding the right probiotic for you. But not every probiotic is the right one for you well that's a very good point and yeah. i know you and i've had this discussion before because with scleroderma patients they found that there's too much acidophilus and too much i believe of another uh gut bacteria and people who continue to feed that and acidophilus that's the one they tout the most right. in many different probiotic products mm -hmm. whether it's in yogurt or whether it's in a pill so scleroderma patients have to be very knowledgeable about their own gut biome and what they're trying to do to balance it out. So it becomes a very complicated situation. I, I think that's why a practitioner like you becomes absolutely so valuable. You've got to be able to work with somebody who's very knowledgeable about all the different things that can go on in the gut and how to supplement it properly. But here's a question. We've got a couple, got a bunch of questions. I want to get to at least some of them because folks wrote in before the show. Um, this one is actually about the gut. I've read so much about autoimmune diseases starting in the gut. I have JRA, Sjogren's syndrome, fibromyalgia, and now lung disease, which is the worst, thanks to the RA. Any thoughts? Also, what do you think of calcium supplements, especially those derived from algae? Big question. Yeah, the algae went through me, let me tell you. Um, you know, I'm not a real big calcium person. There's a lot of calcium. It's kind of ubiquitous in the diet, uh, you mm -hmm. know, unless you're eating a really poor diet. But if you're eating a reasonably good diet, you're getting enough calcium. Um, so 
I, I don't really deal with a lot of calcium supplementation. There are times, and there's a certain amount, and there's a certain kind. A lot of these calcium supplements you'll see says calcium carbonate. Well, if you look at your sheetrock mm -hmm. on your walls, that's calcium carbonate. Oh, great. Yeah, so, you know, it's a lot cheaper. Nice. You could, you could, you could buy a four by eight yeah. piece of sheetrock <laughs> and you have enough calcium carbonate for 10 years. And that's only like 30, <laughs> you know, 12 bucks. Right. <laughs> um, so, it's a cheap method. Yeah. Well, they're saying so, that actually it's magnesium that's a lot more important than the calcium. But for somebody like this who has so many different issues, she's, I know who this is, and she started out with RA as a child. They put her on tremendous amounts of medication. The medication then created the lung disease and some of the other issues she finds herself facing today. So we jump back to, to, to you know, back in the conversation toxicity is causing this problem to right. undo that to unravel all these things you have to work yourself backwards um, right. but the question about the about the gut super important um, two points one is the prevalence of acidophilus in scleroderma the acidophilus isn't causing the problem. What's causing the problem is why the acidophilus isn't balanced with something right. else. Something else, right. And, and so you got to track it that way. So some mm -hmm. people say, well, just don't take acidophilus. Well, guess what? You have a little bit of acidophilus and you got all the time. If you look at the reproduction rate of bacteria, like every however many seconds, it doubles. Mm. Yeah. Within a minute, now, now when you know, when 50 doubles to 100, 100 doubles, you know, to 200, within, you know, minutes, you know, by the time you're 10 minutes down the road and you're just living a life 24 hours, that bacteria is growing. So it's not about not taking the bacteria. It's about controlling it, finding what is missing in the gut. And as far as what's the cause of autoimmune disorders or immune disorders um, is when the gut becomes leaky, there's these little microscopic villi, and there's mm -hmm. enzymes around each and every one of those villi. So, you know, you eat a steak, and the protein gets, you know, kind of broken down, and now it's in solution, and then it hits on these little microscopic fingers, and the enzymes basically dissolve them into a smaller particle mm. Uh, you know, the building blocks of the protein and you absorb it. Now, when those fingers get damaged from every kind of, th from antibiotics, from different kinds of medications, from poor diet, under eating, over eating, uh, not enough water, etc. cetera, um, the pH is wrong in your stomach because you have anxiety and it's changing the pH. Um, that particle goes in and there's a layer in your gut that basically processes all the nutrition that comes in. Okay, this is good. This is great. We're going to send it here. We're going to use this for that. But when a particle gets through that's been undigested, your body thinks, oh, that's a virus or that's a bacteria or, or you know, that's mm. a yeast. And it will try and kill it. And so it makes an antigen to that particle. Now, every time you eat a steak, it's basically like you're giving yourself an infection. Wow. And, and, and so then your body is now looking at this molecule as it floats around the body, and it has antigens to it, so it starts attacking it. Now, here's a very interesting thing. You're going to absorb, you know, some of, the, some of that particle did get digested and winds up in your cell. And your immune system's now scouring your body for these this particle that used to be a used to be a cow, but it used to be a steak, and mm -hmm. then it sees that little particle, very similar particle inside a cell or around a cell, and it attacks it. And now it has an antigen to the cell as well. And so it oh, starts attacking my those cells. And yeah. there's another mechanism in your body that says, no, don't do that. It's not good. And now the fight begins. And that's mm -hmm. the beginning of autoimmunity. And it's the immune system has to be, has to be corrupt in some way. It has to have been affected. It has to be, you know, overwhelmed. And it's, it becomes more confused. Um, right. you know, and so we act just like our immune system do. You know, if you get under a lot of stress and you're trying to figure out, you know, which turn do I make? And you're right in the middle of the city and there's cars coming at you and you go, I'm just going to go straight. Yeah. You know, 
your immune system goes, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to go straight and I'm going to attack that cell because why not? Because it, yeah. Because you know, <laughs> it can. Because right? it can. Because it's, 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 yeah. it's on a mission. It's its purpose. And so yeah, it's, 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 in Western right. medicine, they say, well, yeah, that's happening. So what do you want to do? We want to suppress the immune system. We want to shut it down. Um, and they've been very successful at finding different aspects of the immune system and shutting it down specifically. So you get a really good result, you know, with Crohn's or, or with, the, with RA. But ultimately, now what's going to happen? You're going to have other, your immune system suppressed. You're going to have these other infections. Let's call it the co-infection of immune diseases because your immune system suppressed. You know, they always say, oh, if you have tuberculosis or a cold, don't start taking mm -hmm. this. Well, what if you get right. a cold after you start taking it? It's a problem. And so now this, this case starts to become more complex because you're getting other infections which are shutting down different parts of your, of your matrix. And exactly. The, and, the, and the information That's how this is not ended getting back. up with lung disease, you know. So yeah. now it's not only RA, but now we've got lung disease to let, you know, to overblown, you know, the whole situation becomes such a serious one. It's serious to begin with, but then it becomes very life threatening. So again, it makes sense again to get to you or a practitioner like you in another city yes. who can really help people to step through this there is a lot to it and that's why i'm always in favor of working with somebody and again as a partnership so that you can get to the bottom of it now there's another question here about dogs that we discussed the other day too people wanted to know do you treat dogs the same way that you treat people with lyme and or immune disease because dogs are getting lyme dogs are getting autoimmune diseases right. now too it's rising exponentially in their population yeah and i don't treat dogs it's not within the you know my scope of practice, but um, one thing that we know is that uh, a simple remedy this is a simple remedy. This, this is a great thing. Uh, Nano Silver, um, which really comes from just one company, they have the patent on it, but it's marketed um, you know through many many companies. Nano Silver uh, is a particle that's antimicrobial. It basically has a charge on it. So the thing I was saying about the mitochondria, um, it increases the frequency and the charge of your cells. So they become stronger, more efficient at producing energy and removing toxins and, and, and you know, utilizing nutrition. But it also will attach itself to a virus or a bacteria and basically cleave off one of the molecules the electrons mm. off the, and and basically destroy that cell and with animals you can just spray it in the water um, I, I I had a, a person who came to me and they were very upset their their cat was gonna pass away and oh, no. um, they were on antibiotics nothing was you know just really wasn't working um, and you know busybody me I said well listen I you know I know you're not here for your dog but get some smart silver just spray it in the bowl spray it in its mouth you know because um, you can use an antibiotic and smart silver together in fact okay. they found so, with MRSA nice. with MRSA and, and resistant mm. strains Western yeah. medicine is now starting to use silver in conjunction because it makes the antibiotic uh -huh. so much more effective, which means also that you can use a lot less, so that toxicity load becomes less. Um, but for your animal, um, uh, you know, for Lyme disease, whatever you're going to give, you know, you can even use a homeopathic, um, mm -hmm. which works on dogs, it works on, you know, on people too. I mean, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, you can put that in its water, or drop that in its mouth. Um, so I would say smart silver and a, a the correct a homeopathic remedy for an animal would be very, very effective along with whatever, you know, your vet would, you know, would recommend. Right. If, you know, whether it is an antibiotic or if you're using a, uh, you know, a natural, um, you know, holistic vet, you know, it was a very great combination. Is it colloidal, sounds wonderful. Yeah. Is colloidal silver the same as smart silver? No, colloidal silver is different. Now, colloidal silver is a colloidal particle of silver that's suspended in water. Okay. So if you let it sit there, it'll drop down. Mm -hmm. um, and in your body, it, it's a, it's, it, it doesn't have the same charge, whereas the nano silver is actually electronically attached to a water molecule. 
So it's, it floats around until that water molecule gets out. Um, and that's why with nano silver, you'll see like 10 parts per million, whereas colloidal silver, you'll see way upwards of that 50 parts per million or even more, okay. because you have to use a lot more of it to get the same effect. Wow. So well, this, has been, this is just yeah. fascinating because the nano silver, that's nice to know because I know so many people that are using the colloidal silver when they have different things pop up. So they're really defeating some of it themselves because it's not strong enough. Yeah, I have some right here. I always keep some on my desk right here because whenever I am, I'm working with somebody, I always mm -hmm. spray my hands like this, you know, oh. keep a good thing. You spray it in your mouth. And interesting enough, there you go. Pink, pink eye or irritation in your eye, eyes yeah. open, right in your eyes, doesn't sting at all. That sounds wow. like an infomercial. Yeah. But I really love this <laughs> Well, product. I'll tell you what, I always have a scratch to one eye. I can't get rid of it. I'm going to get some today. It's, it's yeah. really, and, it, and it's so soothing for your eyes as well. So ah, uh, I, I like that product. And so um, to, to the you know, person that asked that question, uh, you, know, you can find this online. You could call me up. I sell it. Your um, bottle? Up so we can yeah. see it. Yeah, let's see. How is uh, there? You go, smart, smart silver. silver. Smart silver. Yeah. Um, okay. Sell it. Thank so. you. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things. I try and get everyone to go home with it because I know if they get a cut, yeah. if they get a scratch, mm -hmm. if they're getting a cold, right. if you get food poisoning, you start spraying it. I send people overseas when they're going out of the country. It's like. You better have this, you know, on yeah, the plane, right. before you get in the plane, when you get off the plane. Um, it's a great product. Perfect. Wonderful to know. Well, Robert, we can't thank you enough for coming on the show today. Uh, this has been incredible. I have so much to think about. Again, oh. PK, did you learn a lot today or what? I certainly <laughs> did. The oh, worst good. part That's is good. I learned how much I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, this oh. has been great. Now, again, thank you, everybody, for listening to our very special presentation. You can find Robert Abatello at www.clearpointacupuncture.com. His practice is in Florence, Massachusetts, but he is also available for phone consults. You can find him there, clearpointacupuncture.com. Now, next week, we are going to have Ned, what's his name? Nick. Nick Redfern is coming back. Thinking, oh, oh. You scared Remember me for him? a minute because I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, who's Ned? It's Nick Redfern. He's yeah. coming back. He's talking about Mothman, cryptids, all the crazy, lovely stuff that we love to talk about. All the <laughs> latest. You know, the Mothman sightings are going nuts in Chicago. We got to hear about it from Nick. So Nick had to be rescheduled because he got horribly sick. But he's all better now, and he's going to join us next week. So until then, everybody, have a great week, a great Thanksgiving. Eat a lot of whatever special for you, turkey or your <laughs> vegan meal. And we will see you on the Blue Highway. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>